here to discuss. Criminal defense attorney and former prosecutors Franz Borkhardt and David Bruno. David, I'll start with you. Big news. I mean, we, we said it, big news. I mean, I thought, you know, it was pretty clear that this was coming. These are, these are egregious claims. But now we've got to have a hearing to see if they're actually true. Sure, this is a procedural win for the defense. And that is because when Murdoch appealed his conviction, the jurisdiction essentially transferred from the trial court to the appeals court. And that's what that motion and this appeals court's decision stands for, is that they're gonna kick it back down to the trial court for the trial court to make that decision, whether or not there's going to be a testimonial hearing to delve into these issues of misconduct. So that's not what today's news stands for. It's essentially just a procedural move. The appeals court is not saying that there is misconduct. The appeals court's not saying that there's gonna be a testimonial hearing. But I believe that those things will be happening. And even if we get a new trial, I think it's going to be the same result. I don't think that this clerk is the one responsible for Murdoch's conviction. I think it's because the mountain of evidence that was presented to the jury, the inconsistencies with Murdoch's statement and the forensics and the physical evidence and the cell phone and the speed of the car and all of those other reasons that could be pointed to for the reason of the guilt. Yeah, I, I agree with you. But again, these are egregious allegations, Franz. And I can't see the circuit court just sign up, kind of you know, pushing them aside and saying, we're not going to dig into this. At the very least, they've got to get Becky Hill under oath. They've got to take a look at those affidavits and see if those jurors are willing to come forward because somebody's lying. She said she didn't do any of these things. These jurors say she did. Somebody's lying. I think the court has, I don't want to call it an obligation, but I think they have kind of an obligation to figure out what's going on here. These allegations are so serious, so over the top, so Murdoch in nature that they could be true. And if the jurors get on the stand, Michael, and they say, this is what she did, why are they lying? You know, I, she's, I'm not saying she wrote a book and this was a big giant conspiracy on her part, but who has the incentive to lie? Who has the motivation, the motive to lie? And here's the thing, even if she did these things, does it change the outcome? Probably not. Does it maybe breathe life into a new trial? Probably. And then here's the other question. Do we get the same judge? His comments during the sentencing were, were pretty, pretty much him sharing his feelings about Murdoch. So I don't... This is a whole bunch of chaos that only tends to help criminal defense attorneys. And this is the recipe for possibly a resolution or plea down the road if they don't retry it. Yeah, it's, it, is a, it is a mess and it's becoming messier by the day. So David, help, help clarify for me. Um, once this goes to the circuit court, they're gonna determine whether they wanna have a hearing or not. What are they looking at here? What, what are, how do they determine whether they think this rises to the level that they have to have a full-blown hearing, which is obviously what they've already said uh, they're going to look for, what uh, Murdoch's attorneys have said, that that's what we're looking for here, a full-blown evidentiary hearing. What does the court have to determine to say, okay, this is what we want to do? Yeah, it's my opinion that if it's borne out in testimony, meaning that right now there's an issue of fact that has to be resolved. And that's why they would have the hearing. They would call live witnesses, jurors, uh, the clerk herself, and they have to come to an agreement on fact. The fact finder, so to speak, has to. If there's misconduct, if that jury got opinions that was not grounded in the rules of evidence and vetted the way that our criminal justice system is set up to do, if they were privy to information like what is alleged, that he should get a new trial. Mm -hmm. Hands down, that is why we vet our juries and they have to be fair and impartial. Yeah, there's a question as to whether it influenced the trial or not. I don't think that matters. If that information was given or put in front of this jury, I think ultimately he deserves a new trial. So this is going to be something to watch very, very closely.